What you're looking at is a pangolin, which is not kin to an armadillo in any way whatsoever. I'm Burns Hargis for another edition of Inside OSU, and I'm here at the Oklahoma State University Zoology Vertebrate Collection. Uh, in fact, the pangolin is a native of Africa and Asia, and one of the thousands of species here at this incredible collection. Uh, we're going to find out a lot more about our friend here, the pangolin, as well as many of the other species in this collection. Come with me. I'm in one of the two large rooms here uh, that houses our collection, and to my right is the uh, head of our Department of Zoology, Dr. Lauren Smith. Dr. Thank Smith, you for coming. Thank you for having us. And to my left is the curator, uh, Dr. Karen McBee. So we we're anxious to talk to you about our friend the pangolin and other things. Thank you so much for coming. But first, tell us a little bit about the department, Dr. Smith. We've been undergoing a rapid change in the department. We've hired nine new faculty in the last three years. Wow. Uh, we have about 420 undergraduates in the zoology, physiology, and biology majors. We have over 50 graduate students who are doing Ph.D. and M.S. work, and that's just in zoology. Uh, now, a lot of zoology majors go on to medical school, don't yes, they? Yes, a large portion, particularly physiology, zoology, and a large portion of our, our uh, uh, biology majors make it on to uh, pre-dental or pre -os and. Yeah. Well, you've been going uh, through sort of a metamorphosis here and, and uh, have had some assistance uh, from outside, I understand. Yes, we've been very successful in, in garnering grants. Uh, we were over $2 million last year from uh, the National Institutes of Health, uh, Environmental Protection Agency, uh, United States Department of Agriculture, and the National Science Foundation. I see. Well, let me ask uh, Dr. McBee a little bit first about our friend here, the pangolin. Well, as you pointed out, these uh, guys are native to Africa and Asia, and so it's not something Oklahoma students normally get a chance to see. It's There's, quite an extensive collection, isn't it? It is. Uh, we have a collection of mammals that numbers about 13,000 uh, individual specimens, a collection of amphibians and reptiles that's about 12,000 individual specimens. Our bird collection has only about 2,500 specimens but they're really good specimens. And then our largest collection is the collection of fishes. Uh, we have nearly 40,000 lots of fishes. Oh my word. We have some other things here. We've got, uh, this is a fairly onerous looking creature. <laughs> this is one that usually scares folks a little bit. This skull Thanks. is from a grizzly bear. Oh my, look at the choppers on Isn't that, that amazing? Wow. And then this is a, an old friend in Oklahoma, isn't it? Absolutely. Yes, it's a bison. That's a, that's a bison, and then uh, we need to talk about. Ah, uh, this is one of our prized this, this possessions. Guy. This is a duckbill platypus. Oh, wow. It's actually one of the few poisonous mammals in the world. Ooh, I didn't know they were poisonous. But it's not gonna hurt you now. <laughs> no, no, that's great. Well, good, well, that's, uh, that's wonderful. I know uh, there's many uh, treasures throughout this collection, yes. and someday I get to hope to see more of them. I know we're gonna talk to one of our students now. This is an incredible learning lab, and with me today is Alicia Hallmark Sharber, who is from Chandler, Oklahoma, and a zoology major. Uh, what, do, what do we have here, Alicia? Um, this is a collection of bats, mostly Mexican free-tailed bats, which I studied as a sophomore. I see, and, and these are the common uh, species that we have in Oklahoma, right? Yes, this is one of our most so common species. So they're hanging species. around on top of the barns and under the bridges and yes. all that. Uh, why do you study these? Um, I was looking for environmental damage done to their growth when they're young. So their tiny little skull is in here and I measured the left and right halves of their skull to see if they were developing unevenly. What did you find? Um, I found a lot of differences between different bat colonies, different bat caves, and bats from different time periods. I compared bats from the 50s and bats from the 90s. I see. Well, great. Well, thank you very much. This is all fascinating. I, I, I think you're having a lot more fun in college than I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, here I am with uh, Dr. Karen McBee again, our curator, and we're amongst 
thousands of fish. That's right. Or fish is if we're talking about <laughs> several breeds, right? That's several right. Several species. That's correct. Well, you've just got it, just everything. And of course, you can't see it here, but there's seven or eight rows of this yes. here uh, on on both sides, and I see everything from things that look like bait to uh, <laughs> something looks prehistoric and uh, just on and on and on. I've got, oh my goodness, look at this guy here. What that's, is that? That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Yes. Uh, that's a flathead catfish skull. Oh my goodness, how would you Sorry. like to noodle that out there? <laughs> no, at, uh, I, not me. <laughs> Black Lake Carl Blackwell, he could noodle, look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, great. Well, this is very impressive and looks to me to be an enormous task to keep track of all this. We stay busy with a lot of help from undergraduates and graduate students. Well, that's fantastic. Well, thank you, Karen. And uh, I'm going to go over here and talk to Dustin Lynch, who is uh, a curator as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dustin, where are you from? Cashin, Oklahoma. Cashin, uh, not too far away. Right. And I uh, see you have some friends here. I do. I was going to show you some of the process of identifying fish species in this collection. Yeah. And obviously with something like a flathead catfish, it's pretty easy. It's pretty big and obvious. Yeah. But most things we have here, these are both native Oklahoma fish. Um, these are suckers. This is a black red horse and this is a golden red horse. Uh, usually you have something else that's very similar that's usually a close relative that looks a lot like it. Yeah, so, well they look identical yeah, basically. These, these two fish, you, when you catch them in the field right off the bat, you can't tell them apart. And so there's all see kinds everybody. of, yeah, yeah. There's, there's different kinds of, uh, of ways that we tell these guys apart, but one of the main ones is just to count the scales along the body. Mm -hmm. and we find this thing called the lateral line right here. You see that right. line right there? And that's a sensory organ that fish have. It senses pressure and vibrations in the water. And then you notice that it divides these scales in two along a row here. Right. So we'll start right there and we'll count all the way back to the base of the tail. Did you know you were interested in this when you came to OSU? I, w <laughs> I was interested in all kinds of stuff, uh, fish and amphibians, and reptiles and birds and all of it. I love all this, all this stuff. And so you've gotten a doc, you've gotten your bachelor's and your master's and now yep. you're going on for your PhD? Moving on for my PhD, yes. Thanks a lot for mm -hmm. educating us on this incredible uh, technique of identifying species. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Well, as you can see, this is an extraordinary collection that we have here at Oklahoma State University in the zoology department, which is of tremendous value. Uh, for both teaching and research. So thanks to Dr. Lauren Smith, the department head, and Dr. Karen McBee, the curator, and the students that showed us around. That's it for another edition of Inside OSU. See you next time.